Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Audi, Truth in Engineering, Borg Warner, Feel Good About Driving, Bridgestone, Your Journey, Our Passion, Dow Automotive Systems, Improving Durability and Increasing Design Flexibility with Betamate Structural Adhesives at DowBetamate.com, and by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Welcome to AutoLine Daily. Goodness, we're already midway through the work week. And today, we are in a New York state of mind because there's lots of news coming from the New York Auto Show. We've got a lot more details about that all-new redesign of the Cadillac CTS. They extended the wheelbase by 1.2 inches, which stretched the overall length by 5 inches. The roof and cowl are actually 1 inch lower and when you put it all together, the car looks a lot sleeker. The base curb weight is 3,616 pounds. That's 1,640 kilos. Cadillac claims that's 200 pounds, or about 90 kilos, lighter than a comparable BMW 528i. Part of that weight savings comes from aluminum door structures. The new CTS will also have an optional 8-speed automatic a feature that probably would have come sooner to the Cadillac lineup, if not for the GM bankruptcy. And check the link in the show notes in today's show for a lot more information on this car. Despite their boring reputation, minivans are perfect for families with young children. And now the 2014 Honda Odyssey has a new feature to make it even more family friendly. The Touring Elite model comes standard with a built-in vacuum cleaner, which the company calls HondaVac. It's integrated into the back of the vehicle and can operate continuously while the engine is on. No electrical outlet is needed. And it can even work for up to eight minutes when the engine is turned off. Oh yeah, the Odyssey also gets some updated styling and safety and infotainment features. Yesterday, Buick revealed the new LaCrosse. Today, it took the wraps off the 2014 Regal. It's powered by a new 2-liter turbo with 18 more horsepower, and there is a 2.4-liter with e-assist also available. The engines are mated to a 6-speed automatic, and the Regal GS is available with a 6-speed manual. It also features refresh styling, a new all-wheel drive system, and new safety features. They go on sale this fall. Jaguar just unveiled a Performance R version of its flagship, XJ sedan. The XJR features a retuned suspension, some aerodynamic bits, and exclusive interior materials. It's powered by a 5-liter V8 mated to an 8-speed automatic and can go from 0 to 60 in only 4.4 seconds. In another JLR reveal, they pulled the wraps off the new Range Rover Sport. This SUV benefits from 75% unique parts compared to its sister vehicle, the Range Rover. And that's because its lightweight aluminum architecture and chassis are actually based off the Jaguar XJ sedan. In other New York news, Audi announced the all-new A3 sedan. Even though the exterior has been completely redesigned, it's still unmistakably Audi. It features a wide variety of powertrain options, including a 1.8 liter or 2 liter gasoline engine, a 2 liter diesel, a plug-in gasoline hybrid offered in the e-tron, and a high output 2 liter in the new S3. They'll all hit the showrooms in the first quarter of 2013. Okay, this final tidbit did not come out of the New York show, but we welcome it nonetheless. Lexus is going to build that outrageously beautiful LFLC. Lexus was knocked out by the public's reaction this concept car generated out on the auto show circuit, and so it's been given the green light to go into production. But so far, we don't know where or when. Coming up next, it's time for You Said It. You know why I pulled you over, ma'am? I need you to recalibrate the Doppler shift on the return signal. Radar's on the frisk. Do Sonata drivers know something you don't? The Sonata from Hyundai. And now it's time for some of your feedback. 
David Sproul heard our report of how truck fleets in the U.S. are getting really interested in converting to compressed natural gas or liquid propane and asks, I have to wonder if diesel locomotives should be converted to LPG or CNG. David, we're already looking into it. The Burlington Northern Railroad is experimenting with locomotives using liquid natural gas, and so is the Canadian National Railway. GE and Caterpillar are making locomotive engines that can run on LNG. They expect to have the results of their tests next year. Law 19157 wants to know, with the combined weight of the liquid propane or natural gas and their tanks, is it heavier than the combined weight of petrol and its gas tank? Law compressed natural gas is stored at 3,600 PSI and they need very heavy tanks to withstand such high pressure. But liquid propane is stored at only about 250 PSI, so their tanks are not as heavy. And because liquid propane is so much lighter than gasoline, when the tanks are full, the LNG system is lighter than the gasoline one. SeaTex says, Thank for, thanks for recognizing Bobby Smith of the Spinners. For the record, he was not the lead singer for many of the group's hits like Then Came You or Rubber Band Man. That was Philip Wynn. But he did contribute to the writing and performing. Some of those Spinner songs could or should be used in automotive commercials. How about Rubber Band Man for CVT transmissions? <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. John heard our report on the global race amongst car companies to lock up a carbon fiber supply chain and asks, if the big companies are scoring the carbon fiber suppliers, will the hobbyists still have sources? Yeah, don't worry about it. You're about to see a huge jump in carbon fiber production and prices are going to come down a lot. Rumblestrip adds this, in the race for carbon fiber, who will be the first company to channel Henry Ford and just buy a supplier outright? It sounds as if VW and BMW are the closest. Besides the enormous startup costs, what's stopping someone like Hyundai from just having their own plant? They already benefit greatly in cost and quality measure from owning their own steel plant. And that's a great point, Rumble Strip. I wouldn't be surprised to see someone like the Hyundai Group get its own carbon fiber company, but so far no automaker has the manufacturing volume needed to justify having its own in-house supplier. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments. We really love getting them. But before we go, don't forget that our guest on Auto Line After Hours tomorrow night is Ken Kelzer, the chief engineer of that all-new Chevy Impala. And I really like these shows where we get the chief engineers because you learn so much about these new cars. So join me in the auto extreme as Peter DeLorenzo for some of the best insider discussions in the industry. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.